I feel like I've recorded this intro now so many times um, trying to get it right and I'm not going to get it right. So I'm going to ramble a little bit about why I bought an old ThinkPad and put Linux on it as someone who spent over a decade in Silicon Valley, but now is a creator. I, I kind of even hate that term, but I've been doing a lot of writing over on Substack. I've been doing photography, both professional and for just like thumbnail assets, assets for Substack, uh, and then obviously making videos here on YouTube. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about like my experience or at least like what the original aim and goal was in buying an old ThinkPad, putting Linux on it and trying to use it more like a, <laughs> what we would say in like the Linux community or like the, you know, people, anyone who's done like systems work, uh, software development, like normal people who don't write code every day. Uh, why would they wanna buy an old ThinkPad? and could they use it as a creator? Uh, a few years ago, I actually made a video about trying to daily drive a Raspberry Pi uh, with Ubuntu on it, and that was pretty fun. I actually was able to do some like Lightroom editing stuff in the browser. Couldn't do video editing on that, but uh, definitely good enough for like writing and some basic photography stuff. This is a whole different ballgame though, because with this, I wanted a thin and light laptop. This is a uh, ThinkPad X1 Carbon, uh, mostly to do writing, both for like stuff for my Substack. stack. Uh, some of you know I came out with a short book, a devotional that I uh, re just released this summer. And um, I, I write a lot of scripts or outlines and kind of a combination of both for this channel. So I wanted just like a dedicated writing laptop that didn't have any of the distractions or anything else of uh, being on my Mac or my big PC. Um, and I just kind of wanted to get back into using Linux every single day. Um, some of you guys know in the past, working in Silicon Valley and tech, uh, most of the Linux stuff that I did was server side. So a lot of like, uh, just like infrastructure and like platform as a service type stuff. I, I feel like there's, there's been so many evolutions of it over the over the years. Like it was like platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, like DevOps, uh, we used to just call it being a sysadmin. Um, now it's like you're doing orchestration and automation and integration stuff with like actual hardware people in the in the DC and everything. So I have some experience with all that different stuff, but I'm gonna kind of put that to the side, or at least that's not the like main focus of this video. The main focus of this video that I wanted to do is explain to you guys like how I got this really cheap, way cheaper than like any computer I've ever bought outside of maybe like a Raspberry Pi, like as far as like a laptop goes, kind of some of the decisions and like thoughts that I made through this, um, why you might want to do this. Because if you want something that has less distractions and gets you uh, a machine that just doesn't have ads for like AI PC this or like get tickets to the F1 movie that or just like all the distractions that come with the other platforms that are out there and like their whatever multi-trillion dollar interests in their business. I've just found that I'm much more productive on this as far as generating my own thoughts, thinking through things, planning, and just like writing and getting down to the work that I need to get down to. So, so with that, let's just talk about um, how much this cost and what are the specs of this. Um, I purchased this on Newegg. It's like one of their refurbished models. I think if you go on Newegg or Amazon, um, there are like third-party sellers that are on both of um, those stores and you can pick up something like this for around like 200 to 300 dollars i think this was like 2.99 um, you can definitely get these cheaper on ebay you can usually find them like broken replace keyboards replace you know whatever batteries and stuff or re replace screens um, if that's something that you're into um, but for me i was just like you know what let's just see how good a refurb straight out of uh, Amazon um, or Newegg is. Um, so this is one of those. So this is an eighth gen ThinkPad X1 Carbon. It has an i5 10th gen processor in it uh, that I think just kind of sits at 1.7 gigahertz, but can turbo boost up to like four point something. Uh, it's more than enough for this computer. It came with 16 gigabytes of RAM, but that's soldered onto the board here. That's totally fine. I don't want to be putting any more money into this thing as far as RAM goes. And 16 gigabytes, it's DDR3 um, low power, so DDR3L. And it came with 256 gigabytes of uh, SSD storage on there. It's an M2 sled, which is really nice. There's also an M2 port on here, I think for a um, like a 5G or LTE card. So that. Uh, that is very interesting as well. But um, yeah, I have considered even upgrading this to a uh, two terabyte SSD, and this build would still be under $500, even though it would basically have the same storage as a brand new MacBook Air that would cost $2,000. 
and it would still be able to do like 90, 95% of all the things that, uh, like say like a brand new MacBook Air could do, um, which is pretty, pretty crazy. This came from the seller with Windows 10 Pro on it. I uh, will explain to you my story of getting Linux on here because that was kind of fun. This is considered a 14 inch full HD display, so 1920 by 1080. Uh, it's not a touch screen. I specifically did not want a touch screen because touch screens are way more expensive to replace or repair. I just wanted like the plain, like the matte anti-glare LCD panel here. And um, th this was perfect. I think it's like 400 or 500 nits max brightness, which is more than enough. It, I've actually found since I had a, an injury earlier this year, uh, getting a concussion, uh, looking at my like thousand nit, uh, I think the MacBook Pro can go even to like 15, 1600 nit brightness with like HDR. Uh, looking at that screen sucks. Like it, it is so overwhelming and like indu headache inducing that actually like the lower brightness with the anti-glare screen, I can work on this far more peacefully than my very expensive MacBook. And I know like the newer MacBook Pros have an anti-glare option, but um, I just don't need something blasting my face with that much light. And like I said, this came with a 90 day, uh, no questions asked return policy. And that's kind of what gave me the confidence. Like, all right, you know, it's sure, fine. I'll, I'll value my time enough to buy something that's supposed to work and uh, not have to worry about buying any replacement parts and waiting for things to come in. I just wanted to start using this. And so far this has been like great. I'll, I'll link down in the description below both the uh, Amazon and Newegg refurb stores. Uh, because I think those are really great deals if you're trying to buy uh, a new to you laptop, doesn't necessarily need to be newly manufactured, especially if you're gonna put Linux on it. Uh, there are just some really great deals down there uh, as far as what you can get, especially compared to like what's out there today. I realized um, I should do like the fast fetch thing because everyone loves that. Have that up on the screen. So yeah, here's the fast fetch, fast fetch page. I don't know why I'm struggling to say that right now, but uh, yeah, one of the great things about this is, especially on Linux, uh, having 16 gigabytes of uh, memory, I barely use around like two to three gigabytes anytime I'm using this computer. I could have like a YouTube video playing in the background, I could be writing something, uh, downloading something, doing whatever, and uh, this, this thing will not pull more than like three, three and a half gigabytes of memory. Most of the time it just lives around like two gigabytes, um, really, really nice i i'm a huge fan of that super huge fan of that okay yeah let me tell you guys about my debian install story for this so i did put debian on here this is the debian uh, 13 trixie release candidate because uh, as i'm filming this in july i think it's like july 14th today yeah debian trixie uh, debian 13 trixie hasn't been released yet so this is the release candidate my guess is this is coming any day now a few reasons why i went with the rc one i wanted to just try it i tried I think every single version of Debian all the way back to the beginning. I was very interested in it mostly because I could get like KDE 6.3.5, uh, which is uh, running as my window manager here. And it, it feels really modern. It's mostly fast. Um, I don't like how long it takes for like my uh, like alt uh, space to show up, but uh, I, I still haven't like tuned this. I've mostly been using this as a creator, not as like a Unix uh, person that is, you know, and I guess I should say like the, the caveat for all my uh, Unix family friends out there, like this is GNU Linux. It says it right there in fast fetch for you. So uh, maybe I didn't need to say it, but it's there. But yeah, uh, the inst installation story for this was really uh, interesting because I have a USB port uh, type A on this side, two USB C ports and a type A port on this side as well, along with like an HDMI and a um, RJ45 ethernet connection, but I could not find any of my thumb drives. Uh, so what I ended up doing to install Debian on here was I um, I just threw, uh, or I flashed the installer onto uh, one of my CFast cards. And that became the fastest installation I've ever done of any distro of Linux ever in my entire life. That was, and that was the the full install. It wasn't even like the, the um, minified version of Debian 13. It was like the full Debian 13 installer and it just, it ripped. I think it was going at 400 megabytes a second. Um, not megabits, megabytes. Uh, yeah, that was super fun. I'm sure like most people who are using USB 
um, three now uh, to do Linux installs. You've seen speeds probably somewhere around there. But uh, for me, running off of a CFast card, just like saturating basically that uh, USB 3.0 connection, um, that was pretty. That was pretty fun, especially as someone who was doing Linux installs. Ooh, yeah, almost 20 years ago over. Uh, yeah, USB 1.1, USB 2.0. <laughs> Boy, how the times have changed. So I have multiple workspaces set up on this um, on this laptop, really just two. Uh, and this other workspace is where I put Typora. Um, this is sort of like my writing machine. Stop bothering me. Um, I need to actually register this. This is only like 15 bucks. I just need to go buy this. I'm gonna do that. But uh, Typora has this like view that is just uh, like a typewriter view, and then you can just like type things here, like um, something like that. I guess this works. Uh, this has been fun. This has been a fun place to just like come sit here, write, uh, type out whatever, um, whether that's going to my Substack or taking notes for a YouTube channel. You can download Typora from Mac, and I think it's available on PC as well. Um, but this was just kind of like, this was the minimum viable thing that I wanted this laptop to be able to do, was like, can I get a reliable operating system with uh, reliable hardware that feels good to type on, uh, that you know gets me about four to five hours of battery life, uh, that charges over USB-C, that I can just write on, and I can just sit and write on. I don't have like any email on here. My iMessages aren't here, like just messages in general. None of that stuff is here. Uh, this is a place where I can just get things done. This is really fresh. I've only been using this for about two weeks now. Uh, so that's kind of all I've really done with it is just get uh, Debian sort of set up here for myself, some like uh, keyboard shortcuts and you know some like bash profile stuff so I can do what I need to do on Linux, but um, and I do need to change this to Z shell. I usually am a Z S H user um, along with Alacrity, but uh, console and bash has just been, I don't know, taking a spin for it. Like the goal of this is to be like, how many of my normie friends can I give this to? Or how many even like friends of mine that are not uh, people deep in the Linux community uh, or have like an understanding of like Unix and POSIX and GNU and all this stuff. Like if they're people who've just been working in uh, maybe like neural nets or JavaScript or whatever, and this isn't their thing, how could I um, help get the most amount of people um, excited about using a tool like this? So that's kind of why I didn't go for like the, like I'm gonna rice this <laughs> Debian 13 R uh, <laughs> release candidates. Um, I do wanna say something about this, because um, this video is almost over. I feel like I've been like rambling about this now, which I feel like is most Linux videos on the internet. Being able to get a saw laptop with like modern specs and features like Wi-Fi 6 and like a solid display and I, I don't know, just like this thing can do everything. This has like Bluetooth 5.0 in it, even though it's like five, six years old or whatever. It is easier than ever now to buy uh, really good hardware for uh, maybe a couple hundred bucks at most. Um, and again, I'll link all that stuff down in the description below. Linux is more stable on the desktop than it's ever been. As someone who has been using uh, Linux and uh, you know Linux type systems, uh, both professionally and personally, for the last uh, going on almost 20 years, I have not had a single issue with a release candidate of Debian. Which, granted, Debian is usually very stable, but um, still a release candidate of Debian, uh, KDE 6.3. Um, yeah, just, I have not had a single issue, a single bug. Uh, this thing has downloaded. Uh, my web browser, it's loaded all my config stuff fine. I can write on it. Um, I, I don't have any complaints about this. What's crazy to think about is like, if I wanted a MacBook Air that would do the exact same thing as this, I would have spent close to $2,000. Um, but this is like a fraction of the price, obviously. So I'm gonna be making more videos around um, both being a creator here on this system and also I'm gonna be putting uh, putting Linux on my uh, my main PC, my uh, ATX tower. So the game plan is to put Linux on my main tower, which is beneath this desktop table here, and just try to do more both on the creative side of things, whether that's writing, photography, images stuff, video stuff, uh, but then also probably get back into doing more programming and doing more like uh, more things in the Linux, GNU Linux, Unix systems realm. 
Uh, I don't know really what that's going to be like, but um, I guess if you're watching this uh, and you've watched any of my content around like creative stuff and photography and like using notebooks and pen and paper, like those, that, that content is gonna still be foundational to what I'm doing. I've made plenty of tech videos in the past and I've, I've always been trying to like work into like how can I do more of what I enjoy as far as like Linux and Unix systems and all that stuff. So somehow all this is gonna work. I think they should serve each other actually. Um, I do think like the modern trivium of our time is going to be writing both code and human languages. So like computer languages, human languages, uh, being able to generate imagery uh, with your computer, but also be able to capture imagery um, in some way, whether that's a camera or uh, you know some other way. Uh, same with video, I think being able to generate video uh, using a computer, using something like uh, text and just having that clarity of communication, but also being able to have that clarity in your mind to set up a spatial environment with a camera and 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 create a scene and and make uh, make something. I think that is um, a new trivium. Not that it replaces the old you know quadrivium and trivium that I think everyone should should come to know and love, um, but uh, a new sort of trivium for our time. Yeah, it's not a Linux video if you don't have just a few minutes of personal philosophy just baked into it all. Uh, okay, if you stay here till the end of the video, thank you very much. I would love to know down in the comments below, what would you like me to try next here? Would you want me to get more into like photography stuff like I did uh, in the past? Would you like me to do more stuff on video, uh, more things on just like writing? And um, I, I kinda wanna do a whole video on like how I use Calibre to like create my first ebook that I uh, launched this summer. Maybe I'll do more stuff like that. Or if there's something that you're interested in as it relates to Linux uh, or just like getting old hardware and making it uh, making it your own, uh, leave it down in the comments below. With that, I just wanna say thank you to everyone who's subscribed to this channel. If you haven't yet, uh, please do so. It really does help me out here. And be kind both in life and in the comments below. Like this video to send good vibes across the internet. Do it again soon. Later. I was almost gonna just lift this whole thing up and try to like do that whole outro thing that I do. Um, I am absolutely not gonna do that with this. I would totally. <laughs> um.